In today's video, we're talking smart scales. Welcome to the video guys, my name is Tyler, also known as the Fit Chemist, and I help people take control of their lives by taking control of their fitness and nutrition habits so that ultimately we can lead healthier and happier lives. So if you're new here, welcome, please consider subscribing, turn the notification bells on so you don't miss when I post new videos, and if you are returning, welcome back, I'm so glad that you are here. Recently, someone messaged me on Instagram asking what all of the numbers on their smart scale means, and that got me thinking, how many people out there have that same exact question? What do all these numbers mean? And then what do I do with this data? So I figured in today's video, we would talk all about that and answer both of those questions. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna give you three tips on how to get the most out of your smart scale. But with that, let's get into it. First things first, what smart scale should you be using? Well, there are a bunch of brands out there that probably all give you the same data. However, the one that I use and I'm going to recommend to you is the Renfo Bluetooth smart scale. So not only does this have a bunch of amazing features that we will get into in a second, it's also super affordable. I think you can get one on Amazon for 25 or $30. And you can also get some on Renfo's website. This scale measures 13 different measures of body composition, including lean body mass, your weight, your body fat percentage, how much muscle you have, how much water you're holding on to, and much more, which we'll get into a little bit more in depth later in this video. Renfo also has its own app that goes with the scale that hooks up via Bluetooth. So every time you step on the scale, it's going to update your information. So no more forgetting to enter your weigh-ins into an app like MyFitnessPal or whatever other weight tracker that you're using. And good news, this scale can have up to eight different profiles on the app, I think. So if someone else in your household also wants to use this scale, that can be done as well. Not only does Renfo have its own awesome app, but it also syncs up with various other apps, including the Samsung and Apple Health apps, the Fitbit app, and Google Fit. So not only does it sync with all these apps, but the battery life on this scale is amazing. I think it's three triple A's. I've had mine for well over a year and I haven't had to change those batteries yet. So this thing lasts quite a long time. If these features and me telling you is not enough to convince you to go and pick one up for yourself if you don't already have one, Maybe the 30,000 reviews on Renfo's website or the 175,000 on Amazon's website, both which average over four and a half stars will be enough to convince you to go ahead and get one. Renfo also has some potentially useful tools besides the Bluetooth smart scale, including a smart body tape measure and a smart food scale. So if you're interested in any of those items, I will put a link to their website down in the description box below. I do wanna give a disclaimer though, I am working with Renfo as an affiliate, so any purchases you make through that link, I will get a small amount of that and it's a great way to support me and this channel if you like what I'm doing here but if not that's cool too with that let's get into how these smart scales work if you're anything like me you're probably wondering how the heck you step on a scale like this and it measures all 13 of those body composition metrics well if you look closely here we have these four different highly sensitive electrodes which use something called bioelectric impedance which is essentially sending a small current through your body so it goes up one leg through your pelvis and back down the other leg to complete the circuit and this scale can actually measure how much resistance your body is giving to that current and then from there it can calculate all of those values. We'll get into what all of the numbers mean from your smart scale in just one second, but my question of the day for you is what scale are you currently using and what metrics does it track? Let me know down in the comments below and with that, let's get back into it. So what do the numbers mean? As I mentioned earlier, at least for the Renfo app, this one measures 13 different metrics of body composition. Some of them I do think are a little bit more important than others. However, I'm gonna go through and explain all of them. What I really like about the Renfo app is that it does have a short description for each of these values. So if you happen to watch this video and you forget what one of these things are, all you have to do is go into the app, click on that metric, and it will give you a short description as well as a sliding scale, sort of an objective standard of what's healthy versus non-healthy and it'll show you where your data falls on that scale and I think that's particularly useful. We're now going to see what all these values mean so starting with weight hopefully everybody knows what this one means this is the only value that you can actually obtain without a smart scale but this is just how much you weigh. BMI or body mass index is defined as your height divided by the square of your weight so it's a ratio 
ratio of your height to weight to give you some different health markers. However, I don't really like using BMI as an indicator because it doesn't take into account body composition. Again, it's just a ratio of your height and weight. For example, right now, my BMI says that I'm actually overweight, which according to BMI might be true, but that does not take into account how much muscle mass I have on my frame and what my current body fat percentage is. Body fat percentage is just what percentage of your weight is actually fat tissue. So this value is actually particularly important because from that, we can calculate how much body fat you have you can also calculate how much lean body mass you have. So having both of those values is very important because we can use that for other calculations like calculating how much protein we need to eat and other things like that. One little note I do want to say here with the body fat percentage, I have noticed that my Bluetooth scale does tend to read about 4 to 5% higher than a DEXA scan. So it's not entirely accurate, at least compared to the DEXA scan. However, if you are looking at your Bluetooth smart scale over the long term and looking at the trends, it will be an accurate value. So let's say you lose 3% body fat according to your Bluetooth smart scale, the DEXA would also read that you lost a 3% body fat, except those values might be different. Fat-free body weight is the next one. This one is also known as lean body mass. So this is all of the stuff on your body that is not fat tissue. So that includes muscle mass, bones, hair, skin, nails, all that stuff that's all categorized under fat-free body mass. Subcutaneous fat is the ratio of subcutaneous fat you have in relation to your weight. So subcutaneous fat is the fat that's under your skin. It's the stuff that's visible and tangible. You know, if you grab your stomach and you pinch your fat, that is subcutaneous fat. In contrast to that, we also have visceral fat, which is the fat that's found around Around your organs so that is not visible and it's not tangible but this value is also the ratio of visceral fat to your total body weight. Body water is how much water your body is holding on to, including your blood fluid volume, and then also extracellular fluids. Skeletal muscle is how much muscle you have in your mechanical muscular system. So that's things like you use to move your limbs, right? So if you're flexing your bicep or tricep to move your arm or your quads and hamstrings, so that's gonna tell you how much muscle you have on your body. Total muscle mass includes skeletal mass, but the total muscle mass is gonna tell you how much muscle you have on your body, including muscles other than the mechanical muscular system. Bone mass is going to be how much your bones weigh and then protein is going to be what percentage of your body is protein mass. This value, I'm not really quite sure why they have it in there. I would personally track my macros, protein included, and then get a better outcome from that as well. Just make sure you're eating enough protein and then that way you should be building enough muscle. So this value I think is probably the least important of the 13. BMR is your basal metabolic rate. So this is not to be confused with your TDEE or total daily energy expenditure. BMR is just the bare bones calories that you need to keep your body alive, whereas TDEE includes your BMR. However, that also takes into account things like exercise, non-exercise activity, thermogenesis, and then a couple other things as well. And then the last one is metabolic age, which is going to calculate using all the other data roughly what your metabolic age is and where your metabolism lines up. So ideally, you would like your metabolic age to be what your current age is or lower. If you have a metabolic age that's older than your current age, hopefully Hopefully you can start to do some exercise, improve your body composition, and then turn that metabolic age around. Out of these 13 values, the ones that I would put emphasis on are going to be your weight, your body fat percentage, how much muscle mass you have, so the skeletal muscle mass, and then potentially also your BMR because you can use your BMR to calculate your maintenance calories. That doesn't mean the other ones aren't important, I just think they're less important than the ones that I just mentioned. So the other ones I would recommend tracking quite meticulously, and then some of these other ones, they might be a good indicator of health but I just don't think that you need to put all of your eggs into those respective baskets. As promised, I'm now going to give you three tips for getting the most out of your smart scale. The first one is going to be be consistent. You should be waking up every single morning and hopping on that scale after you use the bathroom and before you eat or drink anything because the more data you collect, the more useful this information will be for you. The second tip I have for you is to look at weekly averages. So the weekly averages are gonna be much more telling than the day to day. Let's say one day you weigh in at 185 and then the next day you weigh in at 182. You might think that you lost three pounds, but if the weekly average says you went from 185 to 184, you really only lost one pound over that week. So I do have a spreadsheet that can help you with this. I'll link that down in the description below. And then I also put a link to the video that I have explaining 
how to use this spreadsheet. So I'll put that somewhere up here if you're interested in checking that out after, but I highly recommend looking at the weekly averages. And then my third tip is going to be stay focused on trends. So not only should you take the weekly averages, but you should be looking at the trends of those averages and also the trends of your daily averages, right? So let's say you have one way in, you know, it's higher than you want it to be. If you're looking at the trend and that thing is going straight down over the course of time, one way in is not the end of the world, right? I think the trends are going to be way more important. Take the bigger picture into mind. And bonus tip, which I think is arguably the most important tip. So if there's anything you take away from this video, please remember that you are more than the number on the scale. You are a human being. You have worth no matter what that scale is telling you. And if you noticed with point number one or tip number one, I was very careful with my word choice there. And I said data because that's all these numbers are. The numbers are data. It doesn't tell you who you are, what kind of character you have etc etc so please just think of it as data and then you can use that data to change your future data whatever that goal may be all right guys that's going to be it for today's video i hope that you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below and again if you're new here be sure to subscribe turn those notification bells on because i post new videos every single friday and you do not want to miss when they go live and with that i'll see you in the next video